So in today's video, we will be looking at the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Plus AM4 motherboard. We'll be taking an unboxing of this motherboard and we'll do like a general overview just so you can sort of see where all the ports are and what all the features are of this motherboard. So this motherboard I paid about £120 for, which is a little bit for a B550 motherboard, I do admit. But I do think it's it's a, it's a very good... Uh, I don't actually need to open that. <laughs> anyway, yes, as I, as I was saying, I paid about £120 for this, so I think for a B550 board that is actually okay, but... You can, you can, you know, there there is better, there is slightly better deals in terms of B550, but this is a very good motherboard, and this is quite a premium motherboard, so I'm I'm happy to pay that for this motherboard. And I am, to be honest, I am a bit of an MSI fanboy as well, so that does help. Um, so there's nothing there. So basically, I'm just going to lift the board out first of all. Does that just come out of that bit? I think it does. Yeah, there we go. So that just comes out there. So what, what what have we got in the box basically? We'll, we'll obviously talk about the board in a bit. We have a badge there, an MSI badge. So that's nice to have if you want to uh, geek out on your MSI. <laughs> and um, we have two SATA port, uh, SATA cable, sorry. And then we have a beer coaster, but I don't know why the driver CD is there, but no one's going to use that. Um, and then a thank you, just to say thank you for buying MSI. We have some M.2 screws, which is obviously nice to have. So we actually have, well, we actually have three there, but I'm not sure if we actually have three. I think we only have two. I'm going to have to look on the motherboard. I think we only have two M.2 ports, but, oh, M.2 slots, but I have to have a look at that. And we have our quick installation guide as well. So let's obviously move on to the main event let's unsleeve or unsh is it how, how, that, how does it say that on gear because i can't remember how he says that unsh unsheave the motherboard so i'll do some better shots obviously with, with some b-roll so you can see a little bit more but i'll hold the board up now and that should give you a little bit of an idea unfortunately i haven't got one of those posh sort of motherboard holder things because i'm budget here uh but that's, that's just how we roll at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, um, like I said, this is a fairly premium ATX board, obviously from M MSI. It's got quite quite good premium features. It has USB-C support, obviously. has obviously the four DIMM slots as well, and it has some ARGB support as well. And, and you know, generally, I think oh, oh, you know the overall sort of look of the mobile board, I think it's actually quite nice as well. Maybe I'll put that a bit higher. Yeah, I do, I do quite like the black sort of design and it is nice. So let's just go over the, go with an overview now of the motherboard and we'll just go through all the features basically. So first of all, a massive heat sink over the VRMs here. And in fact, there's two, which is really nice to see because if you are running something like a 5800X3D or maybe even the 5900X or 5950X, like a high-end CPU in here, in here then you will have lots of cooling for your VRN. So any CPU you can run up, well, any AIM4 CPU you can run in this, I mean, it's going to be perfectly fine for anything. I, I, I wouldn't have any problems putting a 50, a 5800X3D in here at all. This this board is a very good board. And, uh, you know, it is quite a, like I say, it's, it's, it's not like premium, like high-end premium, but I'd say for like mid-range to premium, it's kind of in that sort of, sort of range. So we have our 8-pin here, our supplementary CPU power. And then we have our AM4 socket, obviously. So like I said, anything up to a 50, 5950X will be fine in, in here, and it can support that. Uh, we then at the top have uh, a CPU fan and also a optional pump fan, the 4-pin Connectors, sorry, for your fan connectors. And then next to that, there's another jumper there, but I'm not really sure what that's for. But then we have our J Rainbow 2 connect, um, connection, which is obviously your ARGB 3-pin 5-volt uh, header. So obviously this does support 3-pin 5-volt ARGB, obviously, uh, where some of the boards or some sort of like more budget mobile boards will only support the old-style 4-pin 12-volt RGB. 
Then we have another two system fan headers here. So that's obviously nice for obviously your case fans. If you are adding a lot of case fans, you've got a lot of support there. I forgot to say there's a um, Dr. D bug LED here as well at the top. But, uh, just so you know. As well. So that, that's obviously nice if you're debugging and you, you know, your, your board's not booting and you can see why it's not booting basically if it's your CPU or RAM or what have you. We have our 24 pin main ATX power supply connector which is obviously standard. Uh, we then have, which is nice to see, a USB-C front panel connector. So that's obviously nice to have. There is obviously USB-3 header as well at the bottom there but we'll get onto that. We then have our four DDR4 uh, slots here which supports 128 gigabytes of storage I think it might even support more but I'll put it below if it does support any more than that but I think it's 32 32 gigabyte modules four of them obviously for, for 128 gigabytes. Going down a little bit further on the board now we do have six SATA ports there, so obviously plenty of connections, which is really nice to see if you are adding your old style hard drives or potentially just going SSDs like the two, 2.5 inch SSDs. Obviously nowadays it's more M.2, so you know there is there is decent amount of coverage for M.2 as well. There isn't a fan here at, at this um, other chipset basically it, it's, it's just it's just a passively cool chipset and then we have our second well in fact we have another fan header here so we're up to three additional fan headers as well as your two cpu fan headers we have our second j rainbow support header so that's your second three pin five volt argb header we have our main front panel header here so obviously your power button, reset switch, and your LEDs and what have you. There's another header here, but I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, there's a USB 3 front panel header, obviously, which I was talking about. We have we then have two USB 2 front panel header supports here. Uh, so two slots for, for that. So that's obviously nice for sort of like AIO, AIO, AIO pumps and like um, support for that. So that's nice, obviously. Then we have our fourth front panel. Um, we, have our, we have our fourth fan header here. So that's obviously nice. If you are, like I said, if you're adding lots and lots of fans to this motherboard, you're going to be perfectly fine here. You've got absolutely loads and loads of uh, fan header support, more than you need. There is a sort of LED switch, which you can then switch off the the LEDs, which are actually integrated into this board. Uh, and then uh, we have a standard four pin 12 volts old style rgb header at the bottom there and then we obviously have our uh, audio header port our front audio header port right at the bottom there let's move on to the actual uh, ports that we get like um so first of all we get two m.2 slots the first one supports gen 4 drives which is obviously really nice um so nvme gen 4 and i think the second one only supports gen 3 but i'll put it at the bottom uh, I'll put it on the screen there. And then ov obviously our main sort of uh, graphics card slot is a Gen 4 PCI Express x 16 slot. So obviously Gen 4 cards are obviously compatible here. You will need to use a CPU that uses Gen 4 though, or has Gen 4 support. So you will need something like the 5600 or the 5600X or 5700X or what have you. If you go with the Ryzen 4500. You're not going to get that on um, Gen. You only get. You're only going to get Gen 4. You're only going to get Gen 3 support rather than Gen 4 support, unfortunately. Uh, CMOS battery as well here, just below that. Then there is a one times um, PCI Express port for additional expansion. Then there is a 16 times. Um, I think that's a Gen 3 port. If potentially you want a second graphics card, but I don't think you're going to want that. And then right at the very bottom, there is a one times PCI Express port as well. That's for like Wi-Fi cards and what have you. But that's if you do want to add Wi-Fi to this and what have you. And then obviously, um, just at the bottom there, we have the uh, second M.2 support, uh, M.2 slot support there. So there, there, is only M, there is only two M.2s, as I was saying. The first M.2 slot actually has a heatsink as well. 
So you probably didn't see that from when I was just talking about it a little bit ago, but I'll just unscrew that now and then you can see that. So obviously you can just peel back that plastic and then you can obviously put your M.2 drive in there. There's actually two standoffs. Oh, actually the standoffs, okay. So the standoffs are actually there, but you need the actual little screws to actually then screw them in. So the standoff, the standoff here, there's actually, um, there's one at the 80 point and I think there's one at an, um, an additional point there, which is a little bit further on if you have like the very long M.2 drives, but no one really has them. So, and you can obviously move them to the different spaces, but the, you know, it, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory if you've already used an M.2 slot before. So the rear I.O. is actually integrated I.O. shield, which is actually really nice because, you know, we've all had it where you kind of get that sort of second-hand motherboard and then hasn't got the I.O. shield, has it? And then it all looks a bit tacky and a bit, uh, a bit rubbish. But this is integrated, so you're never going to lose it, which is lovely. And obviously, once you put it in your case, you're never going to have to think, oh, I forgot the I.O. shield. But yeah, anyway, so it also has uh, BIOS flashback, this uh, board as well. So obviously if you are using a CPU that, that out of the box doesn't actually support the, um, isn't actually supported out of the box. Like some of the new CPUs, like the 4500, and let me think, the 5500 maybe, maybe even the 5600. Obviously like the 5600X will be supported out of the box. Uh, maybe even the 5700X, you might need a BIOS update as well. So it's it's all there, and you just use that first USB 2 slot, which is actually sort of highlighted around the slot there, and you just plug your USB into that. You press your little flat BIOS flashback button once you've got your power supply connected into your board, and then you should be away to go, and it, and it should just flash for you as long as you've done the correct instructions on that to put your BIOS onto your USB. Uh, so there's two USBs at the front, two USB 2 ports, which is okay, as you'd expect. There is a PS2 port, which I don't know why they still do this, but I think for overclocking and stuff, like in the old old days, they probably had this and they just kept it there, but I'd rather just see USB ports. But anyway, if you are using onboard graphics, say the 5600G or the 5700G, there is a HDMI port and also a display port too. So that that is actually quite nice because um, so many times you see like a big like massive like DVI port or something ridiculous or even a VGA port on motherboards which is just stupid and takes up too much space. So it's nice that it has the option if you are using the 5600G or the 5700G with integrated graphics. So in total this has eight USB ports which is actually quite nice. Uh, there's another two USB 2 ports here then there's another two USB 3 ports here. I think they're Gen USB 3.1 Gen 1 or something or Gen 2. I'll put it I'll put it all at the bottom, the exact specs. Then there is a USB A port, um, USB 3 A port. I think that's Gen I think that's USB 3.2 or something. And then a USB C port as well. So if you are maybe wanting like fast charge into your mobile or something, you could use that USB C port, which is quite nice. And obviously quite a decent array of uh, audio jacks actually. There's six in total, even with, even with a, um, a SP diff um, port as well, if you are want to use that. So actually quite a nice little, um, and obviously we have one gigabyte LAN as well support uh, that port there. Um, so a decent, I'd say a decent array for IO actually, I actually think that's quite okay for a uh, sort of like mid-range to premium board. I think that's decent support personally and I think overall I do really like this board and I, I know I've said I'm a bit of an MSI fanboy but it's just a lovely board, it really looks nice, it's that all black design, it's the full ATX which I think, I still think most gamers kind of prefer full, full ATX board, I mean I certainly do myself so you know um, I think that kind of wraps it up for this video, but if you do want to keep watching, I'm probably going to ramble on a little bit about why I haven't um, uploaded recently and what have you, but obviously if you want to skip that, no worries. But if you do want to stay along, then do. So So yeah, I, I, I'm, I do apologise I haven't been uploading recently, guys, but I do want to get back into my YouTube now, and I do really want to give this another go, because I kind of feel that, you know, YouTube, it, it you know... 
it is it is it is really something that I want to give a, a really good go and I really want to do I really I really want to expand this channel and I really want to make things go further with this channel I know we're obviously quite low in terms of subscribers and general views at the moment and it's been a little bit my fault that I haven't done I haven't done that but um but yeah anyway um obviously please leave a like if you do like the video uh, leave us a comment what you think of the board or would you buy it and what have you and I think for around about 120 or maybe even if you can get a little bit less than that this is a really great board to have and it's going to be perfect for any AM4 system obviously some people will say AM4 is kind of you know a dead platform but I think I think obviously with AM5 obviously it's um, th this platform is kind of it's still it's still applicable it's still it's still good it's still decent but some people will want AM5 now, but AM5 boards are still pretty expensive, at least £200 or more. So, you know, although they are, although they are coming down a bit. But anyway, I still think AM4 is a really good socket. And like I say, if you can support the channel and help me out, this would it'd be such, such, such a help because I do really want to go further with this channel and really try and expand it. But I, I will have a follow up video probably. Uh, talking about that of what my plans are for this channel so obviously do subscribe to see that there will be future videos like I say and I will try and get more back into them now you know I want to do like at least one video a week at minimum and hopefully even two a week but I'll see how things go now and I want to kind of get back into this and really give it a good go now and I hope you want to come along for the journey uh, with me so thanks again for watching the video guys and I'll see you guys in the next one Bye, guys.